Welcome back to Central Valley Talk. I'm Mike Briggs, your host of today's show. By the way, we have this show, but we have a whole bunch of shows here on Central Valley Talk. Uh, art show, author show, um, uh, real estate, uh, finance, all these different kinds of shows. So keep tuning in throughout the day and throughout the week and uh, the weekend, too. And we'll bring you up to date. What we're doing right now during this time of COVID where everybody's shut down and we're having trouble getting people to come into our studio, we're looking around for people who are from Fresno doing great things. Uh, in Fresno doing great things or from Fresno doing great things. So we reached out to our old old friend, Keith Kelly, who's I think in Nashville, Tennessee, if I'm not mistaken, right Keith? Right outside of Nashville. Now you have a book, is it a new book? It's a brand new book, it's an Amazon number one bestseller. It's called Focus on Jesus and Not the Storm. And not the store or storm? Storm, like not a the storm, storm, like you know, thunder and lightning and all the different crazy stuff going on right now. Oh, and I see your book. It has, a, it has a subtitle, God's Non-Negotiables to the Christians in America. Okay. Now, by the way, we have a great, a beautiful image up here of the books. Uh, it looks like you get it on Kindle and uh, different things like that, too. Is that right? Right. And so right now it's an e-book. I'm going to be releasing a uh, paperback book on February 2nd. Okay. E-book and then paperback's coming out too. So what would people yep. do? Just go to Amazon and type Keith Kelly or? Go, go to Amazon and you can put in book, focus on Jesus, okay. focus on G Keith Kelly. That's with an E-Y. Right. Or you put my name in there and it should just come up. Yeah, K-E-L-L-E-Y. I, I was typing your name earlier this week. I said, that might, because I was doing it wrong. I looked it up and I got it right. Keith Kelly, K-E-L-L-E-Y. Just type that in, you'll find the book. Tell us a little bit about the book. Yeah, you know, it, the book that basically, it, oh, excuse me for saying, it, it, what, I, what the book does and talks about, it talks about the basic uh, fundamental things that Christians should be doing. Number one, chapter one talks about if you're a Christian and you believe in Christ and you, and, you, and you want to be a dedicated Christian, you must read the Bible. There's no way out of it. That is our, that is our, 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 our what do you call it, our outline of life. That shows us what we need to do, the personality of God, who God is. It tells you everything. It's right there in the Bible. I mean, what he expects from us and everything. Chapter two talks about if you're a Christian, you must pray. Now, check this out, Mike. The most perfect person in the world ever was Jesus Christ. Yep. And he prayed all the time. All the time. He prayed all, he prayed all night long when he, like, picked the 12 disciples. In the morning, he got to, after praying all night, he picked the 12 disciples. And you know what they did? They're responsible for this whole movement of Christianity. So that shows you how important prayer is. If Jesus prayed, and who are we? We're supposed to be praying too, right? Yeah. Then chapter, chapter 3 talks about, Christians are the non-negotiable. I call these non-negotiables because if you're a Christian, you're supposed to be doing these things. You can't be acting dependent on someone else to tell you what to do. You're responsible for your own life. All right? So chapter 3 talks about you must tell people about Jesus. This is something, Mike, that blew me away. You know, when I left Fresno, California, I had one thing on my mind, and that was my wife's gospel music career. Yeah. Uh, she, had, she had some songs. She had a song that was a charting gospel a song. And so I really wanted to get my arms around gospel music. And I pretty much did. I met all the all the movers and shakers and stuff. But at one particular time, she was uh, invited to go to a, uh, she led worship at a sending organization. They call them sending organizations for missions. Uh, it is a very large sending organization in Charlotte, North Carolina, which is called SIM, SIM. You may not know them by the name, but you know who they are. You remember when those doctors came back from uh, Africa with Ebola? Yep. They, they, went to, they went to Charlotte, North Carolina. They were from SIM. Okay. They were from the Simeon organization. So she led worship at a, at a planning session. And so I ended up finding out about a class called Perspectives that talks about the histories of missions. And it talked about something that I can't remember ever hearing about. It's called the Great Commission. Now, maybe, you know, because Jackie sung all over the world. We've been all over the world with Jackie singing everywhere. Maybe somebody mentioned it, but I just didn't remember. But the Great Commission is the last thing that Jesus told us to do before he ascended up to heaven, and that is to go and make other disciples, go and tell people about Jesus. If you are 95% of all Christians in America 
have never led one soul to Jesus Christ. Mm. 95%. So anyway, so you got to tell people about Jesus and you got to tell them about the plan of salvation. And number four is something that's super interesting to me. I'm super excited about it. It's called being a world Christian. What does that mean? Do you know there's 3 billion people, I think it's 3.5 billion people that live in countries that are called unrestricted or closed countries. Mm. I mean, Afghanistan's a closed country. Yeah. You know, North Korea, North Korea, I mean, you remember those Christians that one of them yeah. got sent back from North Korea that he was a Christian and he died when he was in America and there's a big deal about it? Yep. Well, North Korea is a closed country to, to the gospel. You cannot preach the gospel. You cannot tell people about Jesus. You cannot have a house church. So all of that, that's these, we got to be concerned about the Christians that are suffering in those countries and that are doing things. And there are organizations, Mike, that are doing very stealth stuff, like Voice, for the Mar uh, Voice of the Martyrs. Yeah. They, they, they smuggle Bibles into, like, countries that, that will allow. You know, one of the, one of the uh, spectacular things that they did, they had these weather balloons, and they had them in South Korea, and they put Bibles on them, and they and made the made the balloons go over to North Korea. Oh my gosh! You know they, I mean, they got some real. There's some real cool stuff people are doing undercover to get the gospel out. But we have they need support. So that's why you've got to be a world Christian. Like the least you can do is the most you can do, and that's pray. Okay. That's what they say all the time. The least you can do is the most you can do is pray. At least have concern and and support them in any way that you can. As a world Christian, and I also have a little tag about the persecuted Christians. I mean, we saw very clearly, and I know I, I know I haven't taken a breath yet, and I, I do apologize. You're doing great. You're doing great. Makes <laughs> my job kind of easy, stuff. Keith. <laughs> well, you know, if we saw ourselves, a lot of people saw, I saw, I couldn't look at it at the end, but we saw all those Christians that were being paraded out on the beach by ISIS. Oh, yeah. And ISIS beheaded them. Yep. Right, And there are people dying every day for the gospel. And here in America, we don't even blink. We're just so involved in prosperity, and you know what I mean. And, and there's people dying and hiding and running and sneaking and dying. They need our help, so we need to be a part of that. And that's what I do now, Mike. I said, I love, I'm in ministry, 100 percent, man. I love I love doing ministry. And I, I mean, uh, that was my calling all along. And and uh, I, you know, we, what I say, we have a ministry called We Will Go Ministries. We help people from becoming, you know, we help people from becoming lukewarm Christians. We help them get on, be on fire, Christian. Get on That's fire. That's Yeah. Does. Get on fire. I like that. Now, you're in, you're based in uh, uh, Nashville. Clarksville, Tennessee. Clarksville, right outside okay. of Nashville, about 40 miles. But is, how's that, uh, is that kind of the center of the gospel uh, uh, movement in, uh, in, a, in the United States? Is that why your wife and you went well, there? Well, the reason we, we kept flying on the East Coast for music. I mean, we had to fly to Nashville, we had to go to New York, we had to go to, you know, we, we kept flying to D.C. and stuff, we kept flying for music. So we decided that, you know, when, you know, Jackie, uh, she, you know, she wasn't working at Unified School District, or she was going to retire from Unified School District, she said, well, let's just move over there and be a little yeah. closer to everything. Closer. So that's, that's why we did that. And even our move, we, you know, we moved, for, we were five years in Charlotte, North Carolina. Yeah. We lived in Charlotte for about five years. And then Jackie, you know, she's a two-time cancer survivor. She mm. got cancer again while we were in Charlotte. And uh, then, but she's, she's healed from that. Thank the Lord for that. Then she had a couple, and she had a knee replacement, a couple knee replacements. And so it was, her, her music was starting to, you know, she wasn't getting involved like she was before, right? Mm. So I said, let's go to Nashville. Yep. If, you can't, if you can't play no music or try, write no music any, in Nashville, you can't write no music nowhere. <laughs> There's so many songwriters, man. Everybody's out here. They're all there, yeah. I'll be there, yeah. yeah. Well, one reason we want you on the show is you're a Fresno guy. I mean, I'm glad you're in Nashville because that's the center of the, that universe there. But uh, people from Fresno, they could make things happen. And you did. Your your wife did. I remember the O'Neill sisters singing. Oh, yeah. I love to yeah. listen to them. Yeah. 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 We're, staying, we're staying at it, Mike. I mean, we, we basically uh, love what we do, and, and, we, and we're moving forward and everything. And there's a lot of excitement out here in, in this area. Uh, you know what's so interesting about Nashville, and you, you, you meet these songwriters. There's a lot of old rock and roll songwriters here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I met a guy that wrote a lot of songs for uh, for, uh, for Michael McDonald, the Doobie Brothers, I mean, Rod Stewart. I mean, you meet guys all the time, and a lot of them are just, you know, they, they had a hit, 
they had a hit and, they, and they're still writing for another hit. You know what I mean? Yep. Yep. So a lot of people join together and they write together and, and it's just a real wonderful community for songwriting in Nashville. And it's not just country music. They, I mean, it's like, oh. you know, Nashville is kind of trying to capture the whole music scene. Yeah, the whole scene now, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah, they, they go up there, they got a Songwriters Hall of Fame here. That all, Did you know Jimi Hendrix used to live in Nashville? I did not. Wow. No, that, that tripped me out, too. Yeah. Jimi Hendrix used to, I think, stayed in Nashville for about a year, and he, and he, learned, he played guitar here in Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. Because, you know, in fact, there's a military base that where we live at, it's in uh, Clarksville, Tennessee, that he, he, that's where you're stationed at in Clarksville. Oh, I forgot like, uh, he was in the military. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah to me, Hendrix. Yeah. So that's interesting. And they got a big. They got a big in the Songwriters Hall of Fame. They got a big, you know, this you know exhibit for Jimi Hendrix and stuff like that. They got everybody in there. Yeah. I mean, like Motown. They got they got all the rock and roll folks. They got all the country folks and stuff. So they're capturing everything. Man. They, they want that music city. They well, want that designation. Yeah, well, this is the kind of stuff I could talk to uh, talk to you about all day, but I'm getting yeah. a signal from my producer saying, get to the book and get them off the air. So let's go back to the book. <laughs> it's a new book. Uh, it's just yeah. coming out. The, the Kindle's out, and the e-book's out, and then the paperback's coming out, right? The paperback is coming out, and you can, and you can definitely... You can definitely do the paperback. Okay, my computer's kind of went down on me. That's because that light kind of changed. We can still okay. see you. We can still hear you. That's yeah. for sure. And you can you can uh, you can definitely go on Amazon and put in the book. Put in book. Focus on Jesus. Focus and on Jesus. Keith right. Kelly. Keith Kelly. Focus on Jesus. Keith Kelly. Yeah, and say the and whole name of the book all at once. Okay, focus on Jesus. That's a, that's a, and there's focus on Jesus. God's non-negotiables. To Christians in America, inside of tells all. Inside. Of okay, so uh, uh, read the Bible, pray, tell people about Jesus, world ministry. There's all kinds world of stuff. Christian. That, world Christian. That's right. World Christian. All right. All right. Okay. Not a worldly. Not a, don't get it confused with a worldly Christian. Okay. It's a world Christian. World, world, Chris. All right, Keith Kelly, my old friend. It's good to see your face and talk to you and hear yeah, that you everything's going great for you and, and your wife and uh, that this book's coming out and we'll watch for it and we'll talk about it. And when it's out and a few people have read it, we're going to have you back on again and talk about it some more. That sounds good, Mike. You're looking good, too, brother. I know. I, I look like younger, don't I? You're kind of looking kind of mild over there now. <laughs> well, COVID, we can't get haircuts and stuff like that, so we're kind of going, going all out, so... All right, yeah. Keith Kelly, you honor me for coming on our show, and we will talk to you again in a month or so. Sounds good. We'll be back with more right after this. Thank you, Mike.